Hello everybody and welcome to my best loadouts video for the Hidden Realms update. This is not a survivor tier list but rather in-depth information on which skills are the most optimal to use. The tier list will be coming soon after this video and if you're watching in the future it's probably already out. Keep in mind that a good portion of the alternate skills come down to personal preference and the choice is not as simple as this one has more damage so you take it. Your playstyle is going to heavily dictate which abilities you take on a given survivor and I will cover all the details you need to make the best and choice given that context. However, there are a few no-brainer choices that I would highly, highly recommend taking no matter what. Once we get there, I'll explain them further. There are timestamps in the description if you're only here for a certain loadout. Otherwise, let's begin here with the Commando. I recommend using Commando's alternate secondary and his default special. Commando is actually the perfect example of what I said in the intro. He has one skill that comes down to personal preference, his special, with the other essentially being an upgrade in every single way, his secondary. Once you unlock Phase Blast, there is no reason to ever use use phase round again. The only benefit, if you want to even call it that, is that the default has a piercing effect in a line. Otherwise, phase blast has much higher damage with the same cooldown, meaning you will absolutely want to take it in every single run. Talking about suppressive fire versus the frag grenades, however, the choice is more meaningful. If you find yourself struggling to get a good run due to being overwhelmed by too many enemies, then the frag grenades are what you'll want to use, as they provide a large amount of AoE damage. Note that the explosion of the grenade is quite small and the grenades do not explode on impact, meaning flying in enemies are essentially immune. My preference is suppressive fire as it scales much better due to firing more shots with more attack speed and being able to hit all enemies rather than just the ones near the ground. Plus, as soon as you get an AoE item or two, the biggest reason to take frags is immediately nullified. For multi, I recommend taking either nail gun and saw or simply two nail guns. Rebar puncher scales extremely poorly with its slow firing rate and mediocre damage. The only situations where it shines are when you're sniping distant flying enemies, but those situations are too far in between to warrant rebar's use. Scrap Launcher, despite receiving some sizable buffs on paper, in reality is still a pretty bad choice. The arc to the grenade's trajectory, as well as their slow travel speed in general, makes them far less viable as a primary source of damage compared to the nail gun and the saw. Plus, the icing on the cake is that if you don't land a direct hit, the explosion deals 75% less damage and the radius for a direct hit is very small. And the wiki says it only deals 10% less damage, but that is completely wrong. So I would stick to nail gun and saw for your bread and butter DPS. Personally, I opt to go with two nail guns rather than one and a saw because if you're using two equipments, I'd rather just continue DPSing as usual when swapping between them rather than forcing myself into melee range or risk losing out on a few seconds of damage if I don't. The saw is very fun to use and absolutely cranks the damage out. However, multi has no added benefits to being in melee range, such as an escape tool similar to the loader or acrid or, you know, an entire kit with iframes and insane mobility like the mercenary. Relying on your shift as multi to get you out of a risky melee situation is just asking to die, as most of such situations will be in combat with larger enemies, which the shift stops on impact with. Other than that, you are a walking bullet sponge when you're in melee range, and I strongly suggest avoiding it, save for the teleporter fights, which are the only times where I'd use the saw. For the Huntress, I recommend her default utility and alternate special. While the triple blink does provide more overall mobility in situations when you're strictly moving laterally and for longer than a couple seconds, the single blink is much more useful in situations where you either need to move vertically or or escape from an imminent threat as fast as possible. Losing the vertical component of mobility on Huntress will limit your choices heavily for traversing the map and dodging threats, save for if you want to spend your 17 second cooldown special to get a tiny little hop into the air. Speaking of specials, I find the Glaive does everything that Arrow Rain does but better once you get a couple on hit and AoE items. Therefore, using the Ballista is strongly recommended for the great single target damage it provides. Huntress's main issue in any run is dealing with the high HP enemies and the Ballista is its remedy. For Engineer, I recommend his alternate secondary and default special. Spider mines are another no-brainer choice as they require no charge time to deal maximum damage and, more importantly, will seek out enemies rather than sit idle and require something to walk over their tiny activation radius. His turrets have seen a lot of discussion since their release and the consensus I see among engineer players is that the stationary turrets are more useful because number one, they have longer attack range, number two, their attacks deal more DPS, and number three, the fungus combo. The only upside to the mobile turrets are them moving, however they can't spread Brent, and despite receiving a buff to now match your walking speed of 7 meters per second, they will still fall very far behind you at any time, meaning you'll essentially just watch them fight across the map and hope they take out a few targets before an imp overlord spawns and kills them. Keeping the default engineer play style of dropping your turrets and holding down a certain zone is still the most optimal way to play him, so keep the stationary turrets. For Artificer, I recommend her default primary, alternate secondary, and default special. While Plasma Bolt gives you a tiny bit of AoE for your auto attack, the Flame Bolt has much higher damage due to its 
burn component, as well as a tiny bit of AoE built in. Artificer has never struggled with dealing with large groups of enemies, so removing the ability to one-shot Lesser Wisps for the eensy tiny bit of AoE Plasma Bolt gives is not worth it. Nano Bomb versus Nano Spear is a topic that comes up practically every time I play Artificer on stream. Twitch.tv slash Willie Gaming, by the way. Playstyle-wise, both abilities function identically by providing you a way to CC multiple targets simultaneously or chunk a large portion of a single target's HP. The difference comes with how you aim them. With the bomb, you have more wiggle room due to its AoE explosion, and with the spear, you need more or less pinpoint accuracy due to the piercing effect in a line. Both abilities have the same damage values and same charge times, however, the spear freezes and executes low HP enemies, while the bomb simply stuns. The added benefit of executing enemies makes the overall DPS of the spear much higher than the bomb, so if you're looking for the absolute most damage you can pump out, the spear is the way to go. For specials, Flamethrower deals damage, a lot of damage, while Ion Surge deals a small portion of damage, but more importantly provides you with an escape tool. I am very aware of the synergy Ion Surge has to go super high into the air and then holding spacebar to hover, providing complete immunity to melee enemies, but I have some problems with that playstyle. Hovering in the air while seemingly enticing for complete melee immunity ends up being a detriment more than anything due to removing your ability to strafe and, more importantly, jump. Sprinting, strafing in a circle, and constantly jumping will not only keep you out of distance of melee enemies, but also make you a much harder target for ranged enemies to hit. Try floating in the air with a group of brass contraptions, lesser whips, and stone titans around you. Yeah, it wouldn't be too great. By taking Ion Surge, you are not only relying on a method of movement that will end up getting you killed in many high threat situations, but you're also just straight up losing damage. And again, not a bit of damage, but a lot. I cannot recommend taking Surge over Flamethrower in any situation as the damage it provides you takes up too much of your overall DPS and the tiny bit of mobility Surge provides is not nearly enough to compensate. For Mercenary, I recommend his alternate secondary and default special. I've come to love Rising Thunder after using it more after the release of Skills 2.0. Whirlwind is still a great ability, don't get me wrong, but Rising Thunder gives you more damage, more AoE, and more mobility, albeit only while moving vertically. The sole reason to take Whirlwind is if you want more overall mobility due to moving you both horizontally and vertically, but your Shift and R compose of most of your mobility regardless, so losing that tiny amount of horizontal movement that the default secondary provides you is negligible. In all other situations, namely combat, which is kind of what you're going to be doing most of the time anyway, you know, killing stuff, the alternate secondary is the way to go. For specials, let me phrase it like this. Do you want a ranged ability that tickles a few enemies and nothing else, or a hefty melee ability that oozes out the damage and gives you literal invincibility for its duration? Tough choice, I know. So here's the answer. Eviscerate every single time, no questions asked. If slicing wind scaled to hit more enemies with more attack speed, it may have some more negotiating power, but as of now, Eviscerate is better in every single way, except for the lack of range. But hey, you're playing a melee character, and if you ask me, the only true melee character in the game, so it's kind of the whole point to stay in melee range as mercenary. For Loader, I recommend her alternate secondary and either utility, depending on your playstyle. Similar to Commando's Phase Blast, Spike Fist is an upgrade in literally every department compared to the default grapple. The only change is that instead of you being pulled to everything with the default, instead you will pull smaller enemies to yourself with the alternate. That's it. Otherwise, you now deal damage, stun, and yoink enemies towards you to smack them around. Absolutely no reason to take the default grapple after you've unlocked the other. Her utilities, on the other hand, come down to a personal playstyle choice and nothing else. Thunderfist does have more damage on paper, but in reality, the amount of damage from a single hit is more important in the overall damage for your on-hit items, which those are what make up the vast majority of your damage in a run anyway. Basically, just because the alternate utility has 2100% damage plus an additional 1000% does not necessarily mean it's doing more overall damage because you have to factor in on hit items which scale better with higher damage from a single source. So you can basically think of both skills damage being close enough to one another. The reason to choose one over the other comes down to how you play loader. Do you enjoy holding your charge, aiming it at exactly where you want, zooming through a pack of monsters and then waiting for it to come off of cooldown on the other side of them, then her default utility is what you want to keep. Otherwise, do you enjoy playing Loader as a melee survivor and not a pseudo ranged assassin? Then the alternate utility is your choice because it stops you on hit of an enemy rather than pushing you through them. However, you should note that the charge time is extremely quick on the alternate, less than one second, and you cannot hold it at all. Once it's ready to go, it will automatically fire, meaning using the alternate for mobility takes some getting used to as if you mistimed the release, you would just kill your momentum. For Rex, I recommend his default secondary 
and alternate utility. The secondaries require a bit more explanation, so I'll start here with the utilities. They are functionally identical with both providing a method of pushing enemies away and yourself in the opposite direction. The difference is that the alternate costs HP and does not apply the weakened debuff, but does deal damage and more importantly, heals you for a percent of your max health per target hit. While playing Rex, the two uses for the shift are one, to knock enemies away or disrupt their attacks, and two, to move around the map by pushing yourself forward. With the alternate shift, you can still do both of those things, although if only using it for mobility, you will be losing HP, but significantly buffs your playstyle from the absolutely gargantuan heal it provides, not to mention the little bit of damage. If you're fighting two or more targets, simply press your shift whenever it comes off of cooldown to heal back any health you spent using your M2. It's really as simple as that. The amount of HP it restores is too good not to pass up, so I strongly recommend you take the alternate utility. For the secondaries, the default one still reigns king for me. And despite the icons moving places and the character select screen, Seed Barrage is still the default secondary. I have no idea why their placement was changed, but it is what it is. I've seen a lot of discussion take place on which M2 is better, and every reason I've heard for taking the alternate is that it deals more sustained damage, which equates to more overall DPS. Not to mention that it was buffed with the patch and now does not cost HP at all, and that argument seems to now hold more water than before if it really does deal more damage. But it doesn't. The 450% damage per second means that during its three second duration, you are indeed dealing 1,350% total damage. However, this damage is spread across the entire area, meaning if an enemy is only in a small portion of the radius, they will not be taking the full damage. Then you factor in the downtime, which is three seconds if you take the six second cooldown and then minus these three seconds that, you know, it's actually still doing damage. Three seconds of not dealing damage is a pretty long time for an ability that's supposed to have the most sustained damage. Finally, again, talking about on hit items, they are without a doubt dealing less damage because the 450% damage is spread across multiple hits, each of which deal a tiny portion of that 450%. Now let's compare that to the Seed Barrage. It deals 450% damage in a single shot and has no cooldown. So the only time you won't be able to use it is when you are waiting for the global 0.5 second cooldown that comes with every skill. But let's just assume for the sake of comparison that you are using it once per second to match the alternate. So that would be 1,350% damage over three seconds, but in only three hits versus 1,350% damage across a lot of hits. I don't actually know how many hits there are in the alternate one and neither does the wiki, but it is definitely a lot more than three. Then on top of all of that, you can pump out three more shots of the default M2 while you're waiting for the cooldown of the alternate. But Woolly, you may be saying, you forgot to factor in that the default cost HP while the alternate does not. Here's the secret. It doesn't matter anymore. The buff to Rex's primary was absolutely massive for his overall survivability and the alternate utility, as I mentioned, gives you a ridiculous amount of healing. Both of those additions factored in makes the HP you lose a non-factor in determining the viability of your secondary. If you choose not to take the default one, you are making the decision to deal less damage, much less damage overall. So if you're cool with that, then sure, go ahead and take the alternate. Finally, we have arrived to Acrid. I recommend taking his default shift. Similar to the loader, Akrid is played as a pseudo ranged survivor due to relying on his range skills to dish out the majority of his damage. I won't go into too much detail as that is what the character guides are for, but the simple reason for taking the default is because it has a lower cooldown and thus provides you more mobility. You can take the alternate, but know that if you do not hit at least two enemies, it will be a longer cooldown than the default. And if you are intending to do a true melee Akrid playstyle of leaping in and mauling enemies, then obviously choose the one that lowers the cooldown per enemy hit. However, in all other cases, I'll take the default shift any day. All right, and that about does it with the best loadouts for each survivor in the Hidden Realms update. Do you have differing thoughts on what I've said here? Leave a like or dislike on the video and a comment below to let me know your thoughts. You can follow my stream over at twitch.tv slash woollygaming for a place to watch me play live and answer any questions you may have in further detail. Also consider joining our Discord server for notifications when I go live or upload a new video here on YouTube, as well as, you know, just hanging out with people to play the game. Thank you for watching and be on the lookout for my survivor tier list coming here very soon.